Hi guys, welcome to week 5 uh, of our lecture. So this week 5 is still entitled Moist Air Properties and Conditioning Process. However, to make things easier, we have renamed this week 5 title to be Psychometric Chart. Uh, part 1, we have discussed on what is the psychometric uh, chart is all about and how do we obtain um, psych uh, uh, cooling data like the relative humidity, like the percent RH, like um, enthalpy, so on and so forth using two methods. The first will be the calculation method which uh, formulas uh, will, will be given to you guys in the final exam as well as available on times. And number two, we are using psychrometric chart itself. So from psychrometric chart, we use rulers and sometimes you have to use protractors if you still remember what is protractors means, right? Those like a um, what, semi hemispherical ruler thingy, right? To find angles. So we are going to do that and we are going to use that, okay? So, um, without further ado, let's go to our uh, times page. So, we are now looking at our times page for air conditioning, refrigeration, engineering. I would like you guys to scroll straight down to lecture number five. So, click on that and you will see our PDF slides that I'm going to use in this uh, uh, video. Alright ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to our uh, module, uh, uh, video for today. Week 5, Moist Air Properties and Conditioning Process, aka the Psychometric Chart. So the first few slides uh, uh, is uh, the introduction. Right? Um, so in this uh, slide that you're looking at right now, is the objective for today's uh, topic. Now, uh, you are going to learn about moist air properties and conditioning process whereby we are going to study the how are we going to condition a space. What are the properties that is needed or that are needed for us uh, in order for us to condition a space. What are the fundamental parameters that must be considered? The dry and the wet bulb temperature and the circumstance chart will be going uh, will, will be used extensively throughout this video and the space air conditioning design uh, and also the off design condition that when you are going to design a space that is needed for uh, air conditioning process so we have gone for 4.1 and 4.2 in the previous video week number four right so we are going to concentrate on space conditioning in this topic so if you're looking at the slide that's right now is our psychometric chart in general right uh, the, these are the some some of the points that we have covered so far so on the left side is a psychometric chart whereby you have a point a dry bulb which is at 35.6 at 35 degrees celsius and there is usually usually we will need our dry bulb temperature as the beginning of our uh, location on psychometric chart we will need another point any case uh, that is given in the question the omega the tdp or any parameters that is given at least two that we can find other points as well okay so the lines that involve in uh, in psychometric chart are a few of them the one that um, the laser point is showing out is the specific humidity which is omega which is pound uh, or maybe kilogram of uh, um, vapor over kilogram of dry air right and you have a specific volume constant you have enthalpy constant uh, you have t a wet bulb on this line saturation line is this one where uh, the humidity inside the space is or has reached a uh, hundred percent and these are the dry bulb temperature down there all right uh, on the next slide shows uh, a psycho uh, a sacramentic chart with processes so let's say this will be our beginning or the point where we start if you increase this point upwards you're going to increase humidification why because the uh, humidity ratio is increased right vertically 
if we go down it will be dehumidifying because relative humidity is removed from that space if you go to the right side it will be heating that means you increase the dry bulb temperature right dry bulb temperature without increasing any 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 what yes any moisture so the increase uh, of temperature is without the increase of any moisture and to the left will be the cooling where you decrease a temperature without decreasing any moisture on the horizontal or diagonal one heating and humidifying because you increase the dry bulb temperature of course and also you increase the humidity ratio and the otherwise it is cooling i mean you decrease the temperature and also you decrease the humidity inside that space okay so psychometry chart processes are the changes in air and water vapor properties the change of air and water vapor properties usually change the temperature and the comfort inside that room the movement of state points on psychometry chart represent the changes what does this mean? Usually, you need to find state 1 and next, you need to find state 2. And afterwards, you can see the cooling or heating processes which involve in the movement of state 1 to state 2. Common processes, there are four of them. First, sensible heating and cooling. Right? Number 2, cooling and dehumidification. Number 3, heating and humidification. And 4, A mixing so these four items we are going to cover today right in this video now imagine that you have a pipe right or duct insulated flow duct and most very air will go into this duct and it will always have t1 and p1 right usually your question will give t1 and p1 sometimes you don't know what is t2 and p2 therefore you need to calculate them or refer to a table this is heating and cooling fluid that move through this coil so if you want to cool down a space or the temperature that goes into this duct usually it is a cooling coil or cooling fluid move through the coils and absorb heat that comes from the atmospheric air right alternatively if it is a heating process hot fluid will go into the heating coil and the cold uh, atmospheric air will be uh, the heat will move from the heating coil to the atmospheric air so the air that goes in the exit of this duct will be hotter okay so if it is regarding the psychometric chart usually it is a straight line because heat is added right without adding any moisture therefore it is a straight line horizontally from let's say this is 53 what is it is 48 degrees Fahrenheit until 72 degrees Fahrenheit an increment of temperature without any increment of humidity the sensible heating or cooling uh, if you don't use a psychometric chart there are a series of equations that you can use also you can use psychometric chart if you don't want to use the equations or in the circumstances of the final exam questions if it is given psychometric chart usually i'll ask the student to use a psychometric chart okay now a sensible heating or cooling is an increment or decrement of temperatures which means it goes to the right to increase it goes to the left to decrease without adding any humidity therefore at state one humidity will be equal to state two humidity right this is called sensible heat whereby the increment of temperature is without any adding or subtracting water from the space if you use an equation it is mh2 mah2 equals to q plus mah1 so what does it mean look at this state the laser pointer there this is state one while this is state two this is called a close uh, let's just imagine this as a closed loop system if you have a mass of air moving into the inlet at state one when it goes to state 2 at the outlet, the mass will be the same, right? So we are going to assume that there is no adiabatic uh, process involved here. Heat is transferred slowly using the heating or heat is a uh, heating coil or cooling coil. Now here MAH2, which is this one, is the result of MAH1 
plus the Q added into the stream of this duct. Okay, why do you use M and why do you use H? M stands for mass while H stands for enthalpy. Enthalpy is term of energy and energy is in term of the temperature that is added into the space. Usually this energy um, is a um, direction. So we must include M. So this is simply a vector equation, M and H. Whereby, if you want to transfer heat or energy or any kind of movement process, you must have a mass of an object times the enthalpy of the object that moves through the duct. Q is added and also uh, the uh, MAH1 coming from the inlet. So H1 and H2 are this equation, HA1 plus W1, HV1, H2, HA2 plus omega 1, HV2. These two numbers, H1, HA1 and HA2 are determined from the tables. We have to add omega and H this equation because this equation is solely uh, for uh, humidity. Now, if you don't have any humidity added, like example, this is sensible heating and cooling, therefore, in your calculation, H1 is equal to HA1 indefinitely without any moisture added. If you have any moisture added, so therefore, you need to add up omega 1 HV1 for H1 and for state 2 H2, you must add omega 1 and HV2. Now, if this is a sensible heating, you might omit this two si uh, section out, right? But if you do have to add it, so it will be a latent heating, then omega 1 and HV for vapor will be used. Q in this case has two QS for heating and QS is for cooling and S is for sensible heat. So this Q will be calculated using this one. If you have the MA, the mass flow rate kilogram per second, if in SI unit, times cp usually for in our case is one kilogram per kilojoule times kelvin and the difference of temperature between these two states will be the q all right as you can see the equation for heating and cooling they are both the same it doesn't matter which one comes first if heating then therefore t2 will be higher than t1 and q will be resulted in positive value if t2 and t1 is for cooling t2 will be smaller than t1 and thus QS will be negative, that means heat is removed from the ducting. Alright, so H is partially enthalpy, a partial enthalpy of dry air and water vapor. Heat equation for both heating and cooling are the same, and the temperature will be a major role in giving positive or negative Q. Right? CP, if it does not give, you need to know what is CP for air and CP for uh, uh, volume. But unless these two are not given, CP will be given indefinitely. Next slide. Alright, let's just put them all in. So this is an example for sensible heating or cooling. Find the heat transfer rate required to warm 1500 cube feet per minute of air at 16 degrees Fahrenheit and 90% of relative humidity to 110 degrees Fahrenheit without any. So this question is regarding heating and when it has no moisture added, that means it is a sensible heating. First of all, you must know what is the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate is given by the volumetric flow rate divided by specific volume. Okay, specific volume can come from the chart. We go to your, <coughs> your chart at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity at 90%. You will have your specific volume 13.33 feet cube per pound mass of air. Where do you get this? From the psychometric chart. Yeah, psychometric chart. H1 and H2 will be you guys will be able to find it because you have your TD uh, temperature, drive out temperature of state one at this point right and state two at this point since we have the same humidity this straight line will be your second points for each of these temperatures therefore it's easy for you to get your enthalpy okay so i'm not going to go to where and how you get your enthalpy so use this one 
Now, this MA is you have to times with 60 because you need to change it from minute to hour. Okay, if you from minute to hour. So if it doesn't need to be changed to minute to hour, then it's good. You don't have to change anything. Right. So QS is six seven five two times the difference of temperature, or you can use the one below six seven five two times zero point two four four, and one hundred and ten minus sixty depends on what kind of equation that you use. Now, um, this is a method to find a sensible heating. Or cooling so in this case is sensible heating and the answer is positive right the answer is positive so if you look at this slide tell me if there is something amiss or which is not right so let me know in the uh, meeting uh, of this week number five yeah I will not correct it I will not show which one or I will not point it out but look closely and let me know if you find the answer Okay, now let's go for the next slide. Next is cooling and dehumidification, the second steps of con space conditioning. Cooling is most often achieved in an air conditioning system by passing moisture into a cooling coil. Heat will be absorbed into this cooling coil and thus the space will be cooled. There are two results. First, the cooling coil cools the air as the air passes over the coil. Second, because of the cooling fluid in the coil is usually well below the saturation temperature of the air, moisture condenses on the coil and drips off to drain away. That means heat is removed by absorbing heat into the cooling coil and number two, by achieving saturation temperature, right? Changing the water vapor to become liquid. This process reduces enthalpy and therefore it reduces heat and therefore it reduces temperature of the air mixture and increases the enthalpy of the chilled water or refrigerants. That means the space will have a lower enthalpy while the cooling coil and the refrigerant inside the cooling coil will become warmer. In another part of the system, this added heat must be removed from the chilled water or the refrigerants to recool as, as it is going to be reused in the cooling coil. So usually you will have evaporator inside the room and a condenser outside the room. This is a cycle called refrigeration cycle. The amount of moisture that is removed depends on several factors including the temperature of the cooling fluid, the depth of the coil, whether the fins are flat or embossed. These fins are to increase the surface area inside the cooling coil or inside the evaporator, also inside the condenser where any place heat is exchanged the air velocity across the coil have a place in this calculation as well okay so this is the equation that involved in uh, cooling and dehumidification ma which is the kilogram of uh, the mass flow rate of air that goes into state one you will have your t1 the temperature for state one the relative humidity of state one the enthalpy of state one and it moved to a cooling coil as q is removed from this uh, space right you will have mw tw and hw that goes uh, from the cooling coil and outside right and number two you have ma t2 omega 2 and h2 ma h1 is equals to q which is removed plus mw hw plus ma h2 that means state number one because this time is removed, therefore MAH1 or state number one will be the main of the equation. So this MAH1 will be the addition of Q that is taken out from the system. And number two, MWHW, which will be the, the water that is removed from the cooling coil and only refrigerant. Here is W, so it stands for water. Right? And the last part is at state two. So Q, which is this one. MWHW is for this one. MA and H2 is for state number 2. MAW1 is equals to MW plus MA and W2. So this is equation for the mass water 
uh, the relative humidity and that is involved in this calculation so the main calculation will be q equals to m a h1 minus h2 and minus m a omega 1 minus omega 2 h w what does it mean the q a is removed to cool down the space involved of two sections first you have the enthalpy right in terms of vector equation minus the one that is removed using water and whatever left behind will be the cooling load sometimes this part is usually neglected because it is assumed that this just air is going to be used in the load calculation when you have dehumidification process or sensible cooling if you have a latent cooling whereby heat is added or removed from the system this section is usually added to to exemplify or to show the cooling or heating using dehumidification or humidification okay so now in this example let me just pull out every point in this example is for cooling and dehumidification the water part is included as we are in the stage of studying the cooling behavior all right which cooling a water part which is this part uh, we added moist air at 80 degrees fahrenheit at dry bulb and 67 uh, degrees fahrenheit is wet bulb that means you are given two points so you can pinpoint the rest of the data on the psychometric chart is cooled to 58 degrees fahrenheit for dry bulb temperature and 80 percent of relative humidity so you have state one and state two okay the uh, volume uh, rate for this process is 2000 cfm and then condensate that leaves is at 60 degrees fahrenheit find the heat transfer what is the condensate condensate is the water that is removed from the cooling coil okay so from this you will use your psychometric chart pinpoint your state one and state two okay now let's make it closer so you will see that you have state one and state two as shown in the psychometric chart this state one state two make a diagonal line like this if we involve in sensible uh, sorry we involve in both sensible and latent cooling you must make this imaginary triangle right in order for us to understand the part number three there so this is part number three where the heat is exchanged right during the sensible and latent cooling or heating process in this case it is a cooling process all right this hw is taken from the table table right which is available on times ma is 2000 which one which is this one times 60 because we want to change meter minute to hour divide by the specific uh, humidity which is obtained in this spot 13.88 you must know that ma is taken at state one and not state two as you go into a duct you will assume that the mass flow rate is the same from state one to state two and therefore ma1 okay, let me bring out a pen m a1 is equal to m a2 and thus it is just m a okay now q will be m a h1 minus h2 minus m a omega 1 minus omega 2 and hw so you have ma which is calculated here per hour the data are taken from the slides from the psychometric chart right and hw is taken from the table so it finally you have the q will be seventy four thousand three hundred and fifty six btu per hour as this is a english unit you can convert it into uh, tons of refrigerant using a specific or the appropriate conversion 6.2 tons will be the answer if you are asked for uh, tons of refrigerant okay now heating and humidification as cooling and dehumidification is used to cool down the space 
in winter heating and humidification can be used to increase the temperature inside the space usually you state one that contains water and then heat addition <coughs> process take a look at this picture state one and state two as the air temperature uh, the atmospheric air move into this pipe it will be connected to heating medium right that means you will increase it using sensible heat and afterwards use a latent heat by introducing moisture so state x there is where you spray water vapor into the air that goes into the starting then goes into the heating medium and it will increase the heat capacity addition by increasing or introducing water and then you go to state 2 the equation will be mah1 plus q plus m uh, omega and h omega or water sorry m water and h water so these three items will contribute the final answer of ma and h2 since ma h2 will be a bigger in terms of q and also for the water in water that is added is ma omega uh, omega 1 plus mw and equals to ma omega 2 okay now take a closer look the equation usually involved in two section here it will go from state one to state two but you will have a straight line for the latent heat which is the introduction using heating coil and another slanted line goes up for the latent heat addition by increasing the water content x here is stands for what is the quality of water vapor that is introduced inside this duct and the angle that is added is called an MSHF sensible heat factor usually you can calculate this which we discuss later in this video or if you have a protector and SHF is given you will know that the line that the angle let me bring out the pen the angle that is made between x to 2 line and 1 to 2 is the sensible heat factor that you can come from here again okay? you can use from here so you will begin with how much the uh, cfm if i'm not mistaken and from there you will have the same angle and you get your sensible heat factor at this stage okay we will discuss this later on another example for heating and humidification for air conditioning system shown below in the atmospheric pressure air is first introduced and heated and then humidified with steam spray determine the required heat rate transfer transfer rate in the heating section and the required steam temperature in the humidification section state one you have 5 degrees Celsius, 100 kilopascal, 90% uh, relative humidity, and the volumetric flow rate is 60 meter cube per minute. T3 is given as 25 degrees Celsius, P3 100 kilopascal, that means you can use this psychrometric chart, 45% relative humidity, and state 2 after the heating coil and before the humidifier, we have T2 at 24 degrees Celsius. That means the temperature is increased from 5 to 24 after you going into the heating fluid and it is increased uh, 1 degrees more after the humidifier. Apply conservation of mass and conservation of energy for steady flow from process 1 to 2. Right, conservation of mass is given as this. M will be always equals as it goes in and out. So from this point, you take your 5 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees celsius this is for latent heat uh, sorry for sensible heat for latent heat when it goes upwards you will use your sensible heat factor which is given in the question if this question is asked in the final exam so let's see right we don't have it so if you have it so you know that is the uh, uh, the degree of sensible heat factor Right, for dry air, 
MA1 equals to MA2 equals to MA which assume that MA is all the way for water vapor no, no water is added and condensed during simple heating or at the, at the sensible heat section so MV1 equals to MV2 and therefore omega 1 equals to omega 2 is this straight line on the psychometry chart neglecting the kinetic and potential energy as this is an adiabatic process and noting that the work is zero of course this is adiabatic process and letting the enthalpy of the mixture of water mass will be h and it will be h plus h a for air plus omega and h v so partial air and partial water vapor will be the total enthalpy in this case E in equals to E out, that means we must have an energy balance. Q in plus MAH1 equals to MAH2. Where? At the point state 1 until state 2 only, not the humidifier. Just these two sections first. So Q in is MA in the bracket delta H for H1 minus H2. From the second metric chart, you'll get your this data at T1 5 degrees Celsius, 90% relative humidity, and T2 at 24 degrees Celsius. You will obtain this data indefinitely. Okay, so state 1 to state 2 is done. The mass flow rate will be given by MA, the volumetric flow rate divided by specific volume for V1. So now, for in any case, whatever comes at state 1 will be the main event. MA1 and MA2 will be the same Volumetric 1 and MA2 totally will be the same Because there is a diabetic and no addition in fan or turbine or stirring And then H, uh, V1 or specific volume will be used we, we, we will use the state 1 as well <coughs> Then using MA in that equation you will get it is 1.261 kilogram air per second the required heat transfer will be the equation q equals to mcp delta t right here there's no cp because cp is one kilojoule per kilogram of kelvin uh, times kelvin let me write this down Since it is 1, we don't really need to put it there, it is understandable. Delta H is, uh, delta T is given, I'm sorry, delta H is given, uh, and then you minus them, and you get Q in without the addition of water at 25.22 kilowatt. This is the required heat transfer to the atmospheric air. As air it exits at state 3, T3 will be 25 degrees Celsius and relative humidity is 45%. And the second method should give all these data, find them, right? When you apply conservation of mass and energy, so MI inlet equals to ME exit. For dry air, MA2 plus MA3 equals to MA. That means from state 1 to state 2 to state 3, MA1 is the same, right? For water vapor, note water is added during the humidification process. You need to use this equation mv2 plus ms plus mv3 and s is for saturated mass so ms equals to mv3 minus mv2 you take it on m m a out times omega 3 minus omega 2 right so you have ma already and omega 3 and 2 you can find it from the psychometry chart and you get final answer ms that means the mass of saturated water that is introduced inside this chamber or inside this duct is 0 0.00504 kilogram of vapor over one second okay neglecting the kinetic and potential energies and noting that the heat transfer of work is zero or zero the conservation of energy is energy in and out ma h2 plus ms hs for hs for the saturated water equals to MAH3 MSHS is MA times H3 minus H2 solving for the enthalpy of the stream MA omega 3 minus omega 2 times HS equals to MAH2 minus H3 minus H2 why do I get this? 
ms is ma times omega and therefore hs is equal to h3 minus h2 divided by omega 3 minus omega 2 where you can cancel ma from both sides so hs will be 2750 kilojoule per kilogram of water vapor so at hs 2750 you will find that your T is saturated, which is the temperature is added is 179.88 degrees Celsius. Right. So the third part is adiabatic mixing. This is called adiabatic because we don't use any pump or turbine or any mechanical work to increase the temperature of this mixing. Mixing. We are only allowing the, the or liquid to mix it themselves and transfer the heat from one point to another the mass balance on dry air is ma3 is equals to ma1 plus ma2 the mass balance of water vapor is omega3 is equals to ma1 omega1 plus ma2 omega2 whereby ma3 is originally from this side look at the laser pointer yeah so we bring it down there okay energy balance will be h mix 3 ma1 h mix 1 plus ma2 h mix 2 divided by ma3 mix is after the mixing that is state 3 okay the mass flow rate uh, relationship from 1 and 2 is h1 minus h3 h2 minus h3 h2 minus h3 divided by h3 minus h1 right again h2 minus h3 divided by h3 minus h1 is equivalent to omega 2 minus omega 3 and omega 3 minus omega 1 so this is a vector representation inside the cyclomatic chart right this and you see that omega 1 omega 2 minus omega 3 is ma1 right omega 3 minus omega 1 from this one as well is ma2 so this number 32 and one uh, 13 these are not numbers these are called vector from third one to another state right now let's see you have for any mixing process you will see that state one plus state two and state three will always be in the middle sometimes state three is closer to state one sometimes state three is closer to state two depends on its characteristic and also the properties that state three has okay so usually uh, by using a uh, equation like this you see that ma1 is equals to m uh, divided by ma2 is equals to 3 2 divided by 1 3 now 3 2 and 1 3 to for us to locate where is 3 usually you need to find the distance 3 2 means the distance between 3 and 2 and 1 3 means the distance between 1 and 3 right so from this point you know where is your 3 if you don't have ma2 you will use ma3 so where is state 3 state 3 lies at the distance between 3 2 and 1 2 right 1 2 if you don't have ma1 ma2 divided by ma3 one two three and one to two you will locate where is your three so the equation using cyclomatic chart uh, or the method to find where is state mixing state three depends on the distance you will use your ruler so and find the distance for example three to two three to two use ruler how many centimeters it is compared to one to three and from there you will locate your m3 we will do some example on this one Example adiabatic mixing 2000 cubic feet per minute of air at 100 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb and 75 degrees Fahrenheit well bulb at state 1 are mixed with 1000 CFM of air at 60 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb and 50 degrees Fahrenheit wet bulb at state 2. The process is adiabatic and the steady flow rate is assumed and at the standard sea level pressure find the condition of the mixed stream that means you need to find what happens at state number three 
So these are the parameters for state 1 and state 2. We call this as <coughs> partial graphical method, right? A. So the equation will be used the M and also the W. So rearrange this theta, right? Then this theta, and you will get this equation. So omega 1 is obtainable from the uh, from the psychometry chart and ME2 is 8332 which is calculated this one remember you have to times 60 to achieve per hour and MA3 is MA1 plus MA2 right and times omega 1 which is available on the psychometry charts also for omega 1 and 2 and from there you get 0.0, .0 103 pound mass vapor over pound mass air and from that point you can find your t3 using the pinpoint method these adiabatic mixings usually used to achieve this comfort zone i believe you know what is comfort zone comfort zone is between 20 degrees celsius to let's say 26 degrees celsius when your states or m3 or where you are located on the on the room state on the room must lies inside this comfort zone right that means you have a perfect humidity perfect relative humidity perfect dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature and specific volume okay so this is where you are going to design the space using the parameters just now to obtain comfort level okay so that's it for space conditioning now in these slides i also have some appendixes so let's go and visit these appendixes and so we will not go through each of these uh, pages because these are appendixes i will touch here and there and i hope it will be uh, with me the first slide that you see like now is the mass of mixture, mixture equation that you most probably have seen before where mass is the equation of ma for air and time stay mv is a partial mass for air and mv so you can rearrange it and you can get ma plus equals to one plus omega mass flow rate of dry air is ma based on the volume flow rate you can also obtain density or mass flow rate a specific volume so on and so forth and sometimes you can use this to calculate the uh, relative humidity and also the uh, and the humidity you can calculate relative humidity and also the humidity ratio Okay. Um, now I'm going to maybe show some terminology Sensible heat factor SHF Which we have talked just now Apparatus dew point Cooling coil bypass factor Evaporative cooling Eco minimizer Effect of fans designing indoors for RH The first one we talk about the The um, uh, Comfort zones Right comfort zones so where your state is for example at 25 degrees celsius or 30, 30 degrees celsius you will lies on the region of warm either dry or either humid so the comfort zone is usually the moderate ones whereby you can stay inside the house without shedding too much clothes because it's too hot and too humid or putting more clothes because it is too dehumid and also too cold right so you can learn about the comfort zone because uh, from this slide you can read it on your own i'm not going to go through that okay this is a typical air handling system where the outdoor air it goes into oh sorry the outdoor this is a typical air handling system where the outdoor air will go into this pipe at negative 20 degrees celsius that means this is a cold place and it goes to a filter because you these two are filters we must filter the air that goes in to uh, to reject uh, uh, dust or virus or bacteria or any unwanted particulates and it will go to heating coil or cooling coil depends on what is the situation 
either to cool down a room or to heat up a room right and you go to supply air and you do here is your space where you do your activities you have your equipment your electricity your electrics and the temperature will increase and sometimes this temperature will be leaked out from that space and then you will have a return air either you exhaust them or you close this and let the air circulate to reduce energy load cooling and heating both of them right the sensible heating ratio is for us to understand if we have a latent heat increment or decrement as well as sensible heat increment or decrement again latent heat is related changes by the uh, by the uh, changes of liquid uh, sensible heat is related to the change of temperatures alone right shr usually a line which is diagonal and this line is parallel to the line that's on the uh, on the sensible heat ratio protector sheets on the psychometric chart these two lines are parallel so from there you can decide or you can calculate what is the latent and sensible heat and where is the angle for you to find the x or the quality in this case right sensible heat factor is sensible heat transfer divided by total heat transfer either it is given shf equals to a certain number which is the one inside this protected picture right 0 0.8 1 0 0.4 1 0 0.2 right or you can calculate using QS for Q sensible if it's given or you have to calculate them divide by total heat transfer which is Q sensible plus Q latent okay QS over Q so either you are given the total Q or QL so you can use this to calculate your sensible heat factor where you can include it in your calculation later on okay okay so this is an addition or reduction of temperature a straight line is for uh, sensible heat and increment above will be a latent heat usually this is a perfect triangle where the angle here is 90 degrees so easy to calculate but sometimes it is slanting a bit so you need to have an extra calculation using the protector okay qs is given by ma times hz minus h2 what does it mean by that sensible is this straight line hz minus h2 to find your hz if it is not mentioned usually it is a straight line the 90 degrees if not you have to calculate using the angles if you have a 90 degrees whatever point goes downwards whatever point goes sideways that point will be the latent heat or h for z ql or latent heat will be ma plus hl1 minus hz so you get your ql all right Example, condition air is supplied to a space at T 15 degrees Celsius and a wet bulb, this is dry bulb, yeah? wet bulb is 15 degrees Celsius at a flow rate of M 0.5 kg per second. The sensible heat factor for the space is 0 0.7 and that means that SHF is 0 0.7. The space to be maintained is at 24 degrees Celsius which is our comfort zone. right find the sensible heat and latent cooling load for the space okay so this is a space the space will be 24 degrees celsius the sensible heat factor is 0 0.7 okay 0 0.7 so this is your condition line so you can locate what is your point 0.1 and point 0.2 based on the given states there but this line right uh you will find your sensible heat factor given as 0 0.7 if not this line here right do as best as much parallel to the one that is on the chart you will see that if you match it parallelly the result here is 0 0.7 indefinitely so either it is given in the question either you have to calculate first or either you are given a protractor then you need to use them to find your sensible heat factor so in this case it is given 0 0.7 already Q is equals to MAHZ minus H1, right? The total Q. So 0 0.5, which is given for mass of air, H2 
H2 is and H1 is fine is available on the circuit chart and you have Q is 6.6 .6 kilowatt right now QS is that Q times the sensible heating factor because it is sensible heat 6.6 .6 kilowatt times 0 0.7 you get 4.6 .6 kilowatt so this Q minus QS you get your Q latent heat okay so this is a simple example for latent heat calculation all right next part is apparatus dew point apparatus dew point is an, an a heat exchanger where you have uh, water goes into this fin and tube so as air or hot air or cold air move through this shell and tube the heat is exchanged using this process and the heat or the air that is, that is going through this uh, heat exchanger will be cooled down even further to achieve a saturation temperature right ts when you reach a saturation temperature your relative humidity is 100 percent that means you can have a higher latent heat capacity to absorb heat from the space okay this is a practice dew point which is at the saturation point there this is called leaving air and called entering air this is state one and state two when you have an apparatus dew point you can reduce the temperature even further by using an apparatus this is adiabatic that means there's no mechanical power involved there's no stirring there's no turbine there's no fan involved in this process right so this this uh, graph is a bit weird you can refer to it for the for always the previous slide so apparatus dew point is essential to any cooling or dehumidifying process as it is allowing the uh, air to be reduced in terms of temperature and entropy by using TS or T saturation method. Okay, in this line, this picture it is very weird because you cannot achieve ADP. This line will reach no point at the ADP. So sometimes your your points can achieve ADP and sometimes you cannot achieve ADP so if you use ADP usually this point the last one will touch the saturation line there's also something that calls a bypass factor where air flowing through the coil impinge impinge or in another word let me write it down have a negative impact on the water tubes okay or the fins and it's cool to the adp right <clears throat> usually we use adp other air passes through unchanged the percentage of air that passes through the coil unchanged is called a bypass factor okay a bypass factor is given by this diagram the air will go into here and either it go through the cooling coil a part of it will go to high here high above here bypassing the cooling coil that means you can either um, maintain a, uh, a temperature or an enthalpy that from the state one and we go to state six straight ahead right as shown in this condition line and also here Okay, you sometimes you have your evaporative cooling as well. That means you introduce air uh, or liquid into this line, and heat is going to be absorbed into this uh, water vapor, and you can reduce the uh, enthalpy in that state and also the temperature as well. Energy balance is m a h one plus m omega h omega, uh, and then equals to m a h two. H one and h two is the same because the enthalpy will be the same right and it is negligible of water so it depends on cooling evaporative cooling if you introduce water or not if it's not then you can neglect the water if you have cooling then you can add water inside that okay evaporative cooling you can find it in your mama stall or mama shop requires less energy for cooling and require less capital investment all right 
okay if you're particularly this one you can read on your own and i would also like to talk about economizer economizer is a place where you put in a damper and you close these sections that you need to close and the liquid or the cool air will move through inside this loop without being exchanged i mean uh, to purge or introduce more uh, uh, outdoor air right so we call this economizer because we use this economically to reduce the cooling load or heating load by reintroducing the moist air of hot or cold uh, air into the space itself so this is called an economizer you can also read about fans right right so so you can see this condition line right so here you can see that it reaches tdp right tdp and you also have a mixing there these points are the points that is involved here you can read this okay the effects of fans also inside the appendix i will not cover this one yet right because fans is at the end of uh, this module right there's the effect of fans in the summer and also in winter right we can revisit this later when we study the effects of fans at the end of this module right so you can also design indoor uh, relative uh, humidity in terms of cooling right by using the condition line that means this line can come from the SHF either calculation wise or using the protractor and from here you know where is your T3 and T4 and when you get the condition line you can pinpoint any other H or Omega that is needed for the cooling process I'm going to skip through this right um, we can discuss this later on in the next slides or before we go in the uh, workshop section before we go for final exam okay you can use fan in dry climates and the condition line also the line that is involved using psychometry chart all right and that is the appendix slides so i have skipped some of them all right some of them we will rediscover this later on in workshops and also in the fan section of this module um, i hope you enjoy my week five uh, video my voice is getting a bit parched and um, that is for uh, psychometry chart uh, lecture part one and part two where you have introduction to psychometry chart the processes that involve in psychometry chart and space conditioning to introduce water liquid or increase humidity reduce humidity so on and so forth that is called space conditioning thank you so that is week 5, Psychometric Chart Part 2. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short videos uh, for a Psychometric Chart Part 2. Right? We have discussed on how to space condition by using humidification, dehumidification, uh, sensible heating, latent heating, sensible cooling, latent cooling, so on and so forth. Right? So look out for my week 5 tutorial videos. And I'll be seeing you in Zoom meeting in week 5.